Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will cover format specifiers, uh, which is necessary before we cover string interpolation in Java. But before we begin, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen Sayyiduna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Warda Allahumma anna ma'ahum ajma'een. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. We begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter, and we thank Him for all of His blessings that He has bestowed upon us, for they are innumerable. And we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his fellow companions. Amen. We also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, as they were bestowed upon Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and his family. Amen. Now, what are format specifiers? A format specifier is a series of specifiers that designate or interpret an output or format an output in a particular manner. So I will just write this definition. Responsible for formatting an output in a particular fashion. That is a format specifier. Before we actually tackle examples or uh, before even examples, before we tackle a list of various format specifiers, what is most important is the syntax of a format specifier. Now, firstly, these format specifiers are considered strings. And that means, just like the escape characters, they must be surrounded by double quotes. You cannot have them outside of a double quote. So these must be used to surround them. And you will have the format specifier here, like so. So just remember, they function similarly to escape characters. Now for the most important portion of this lecture, the syntax. Just as escape characters always begin with a backslash, the format specifiers always begin with a percent sign. And of course, you, you have to surround all of it uh, in uh, double quotes, but since it uh, is implicitly implied, there is no need for a set of double quotes. So you always start with the percent sign. After that, without leaving any spaces, so that is why I will use different colors, you type in the argument index. However, this is optional. If you do not wish to use that, there is no harm in doing so. Followed by a dollar sign. After that, you have flags. These are also optional. You do not need to use them. After the flags, you have, uh, let us use this color, the width of the format. And you, we will see what that means shortly. Again, this is also optional. Followed by the width, you if you wish to control uh, the precision, you add it after a decimal point. The precision in, uh, in uh, uh, computational science refers to the number of decimal places after a decimal. So for example, if you have a number like so, uh, 
2.56789. The precision of this number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places. So if you are writing this format, after you write all of this, if you want, you simply say 0.5. And that informs the compiler that you want your number to be printed up to five decimal places. That is known as a precision. This is also optional. These are all optional information that you can supply to the format specifier. However, the, uh, the, uh, the last argument you could say or the last piece missing <coughs> that is mandatory this is known as the conversion character some people call it type uh, some people call it data it is up to you how you wish to call it as long as you identify what it is that is what is most important i believe conversion character is a more descriptive uh, a more descriptive title so remember the percent sign is mandatory everything from the percent sign to the conversion character is optional you can add it but you do not have to and the conversion character is mandatory. So I will highlight the mandatory portions of the format specifier, just to remind you that these are mandatory. So this and this, let us see if they connect with a straight line. Ah, perfect. Then you extend here like so. These are mandatory, obligatory, compulsory, however you wish to phrase it. These must be present. And of course, you surround these with double quotes, as we mentioned. Okay, that is perfect. Now, how do we test the argument index, index the flags, the width, the precision, and the conversion characters? Well, I have at least what I hope is a comprehensive list of different conversion characters here. Uh, let us see what else. Uh, oh yeah, I need to uh, record the, the lectures for the uh, exceptions and errors. Uh, not this one, yeah. So we will take a look at different flags and different conversion characters just to test what a format specifier is. Uh, I believe there is another picture I have here. Uh, uh, this one. Ah, yes, perfect. So let us test out this, uh, these format specifiers. Uh, am I able to, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so that would be a bit annoying. Okay, firstly, let us find the conversion character that we wish to use. Uh, how about percent %d? D stands for decimal. And this is a conversion character, so it is mandatory. You must have it. This is used if you wish to print numerical values that are integers. If you wish to print floating point numbers, you use f. If you wish to print strings, you use S, hence the term conversion character. You convert your output to match what is present here. So we will take D as an example. And what about flags? Uh, hmm. Let us use the plus sign as a flag. Feel free to experiment, of course. I will be attaching these uh, uh, documents or these pictures if you'd like to label them as such uh, in the description below beneath this video bi'ithnillah and god willing so you can experiment as you see fit these are conversion characters so we decided to take decimal here are we missing anything ah yeah the argument index these width and precision are numerical values and so 
is the argument index. Actually, that is a good idea. I, I could uh, uh, highlight these with their types. So this is a number. This, I believe it was this color. This was also a number. If there are special characters, I will leave them empty. So flags are special characters. They could be letters and they could be special characters. And conversion characters are the same. So this is also a number. And precision is also a number. Uh, there we go. Oh, wait, I need to match the color. And number, there we go. Okay, without the emphasis. <laughs> so let us test. Uh, as I mentioned, I will type what we have decided upon. We will take percent plus D. And we can contemplate the numbers and I will see, I will show you how you can use the argument index. So for our flag will be the plus sign and for our conversion character, it will be letter D. And of course this uh, is mandatory as well. So let us return to IntelliJ. Oh, I forgot to delete that from the array lecture. Okay, so I wish to print a decimal or an integer. That means I must create an integer. I cannot print an integer without having an integer. So I will create num1 and I will designate it with the value of 5. So when I wish to print it like so, I will pass the uh, variable as an argument and print it like that. There. But how would I... Uh, print this variable and specify its format. What if I wish to add a decimal to this? What if I wish to extend the width, have multiple leading zeros before it? Or simply have an empty space before it? Instead of having it on the left, it will be on the far right, just as an example. This is known as formatting. So what I would need to do is use the flags, uh, sorry, the format specifier, which is percent plus D. And after you use that, you have to specify the variable that matches this type. So this is an integer. What is the variable that matches this? Uh, conversion character it is num1 so you can after you uh, write the format specifier close it with the double quotes then comma num1 like so so what you are I will show I will inform you of this error in a, in a moment so what happens is you create your format specifier then a comma followed by the variable in which you want this specification to be applied to. So I wish to format this variable with these uh, options or these formatting specifications. So firstly, you create your format specifier as you deem necessary. After you are done, enclose them in double quotes, then comma, followed by as an argument, the variable that you wish to format with this specification. The reason we have this error is because the print line method does not support format specification. You need to use a particular specific method for format specification. If you are familiar with the C language, you will probably answer the question, which is, which method should you use for format specification? And that is printf. That is the method that is 
used heavily in C to print anything and they uh, you always rely on format specification if you are new to C or if you'd like to learn C I plan uh, on creating a tutorial for C soon inshallah bi'ithnillah and God willing Allah give me strength Allahumma amin <laughs> so firstly let us print this without an argument index without a width and without a precision you know what without even a flag I just want to see the output with these two and remember these are mandatory otherwise they will cause issues you must have the percent sign and you must have the conversion character oh and uh, before I forget this method is known as print format the F stands for format hence why it is used for format specification five what I can do is place this within a string so I can say the the best uh, Final Fantasy game was <laughs> Final Fantasy 5. I do not agree with this statement, of course. None of the Final Fantasies are that good anyways, but just for demonstrative purposes. Instead of using the concatenation operator, I place the format specifier where I need to place the num variable. So if we could represent this diagrammatically so that the uh, the uh, there are no confusions the best final fantasy game was final fantasy 5 which is in my opinion the worst of them all of them are bad to be quite honest but that comes for the analysis and critique playlist not here now I wish to add num1. If you are using print or print line, you would simply add num1 and that is it. But with format specification, you do not need to do so. You simply type in your format specifier, then type in the variable like so. This should be a comma, I apologize, like so. Now the compiler, once the compiler uh, reaches this po this portion, it knows that this is a format specifier. So what it does is it knows that this format specifier is referring to a variable and it knows that this is the variable because it immediately follows the comma. I will show you later if uh, how can you order different arguments through the argument index. So what it does is that it removes this from the output and places this. Oh, for God's sake. There we go. That is what it does. So this is what is known as lingu uh, 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 linguistically as a placeholder. It is merely occupying this space to inform the compiler that this must be replaced with an actual value. And what is the data type of that value? That is where the conversion character plays a role or when a conversion character plays a role. It informs the compiler that this argument must be of a data type integer. If there is a mismatch, the compiler will alert you that there is a mismatch. If this is a string, for example, it will alert you that you are using the incorrect conversion character. You must use the S conversion character if you wish to use a string. Or if this is a double, you must use the conversion character F and so on and so forth. So I will just return this to here like so so let us display this and see what we have 
there. The best Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy V. That is perfect. I will delete this simply so that you can see the different formatting specifications when we add a flag, a width, and a precision. I will add a plus sign here and print it. And as you can see, it printed a plus sign here as the, well, which one is it? Yeah, as the flag suggests or as the definition suggests here. Okay, I wish to add a width. Let us choose a width of 10. Let us see what happens when I add a width of 10. As you can see, it adds spaces. That is the width. So if you wish to justify your content to a particular region, you can use the width argument. If you wish to occupy these with zeros, there is a, there is a specific, uh, I believe a specific flag for it. Yeah, padding zeros. So instead of a plus here, you add a zero. Let us see what happens. There. Perfect. And how many zeros are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It matches the width. Perfect. But I will stay adherent to the plus sign. Now for the precision. Decimal. And I will say three. Let us see what happens. So this precision is now set to three. Uh, oh, okay, illegal format precision, okay, because this is an int and uh, 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 this must be a double, so I will pass this as a double and I will change this to F. There, three zeros. And as you saw, I was alerted to the error that I used the incorrect format specifier because integers cannot have decimals. Doubles and floats can, and they added the zeros for me. Perfect. Lastly, we will come to the argument index. How is this used? Okay. Let us say I have multiple arguments here. So, uh, let us create a string Muhammad and an int num2 is equal to okay 7 just so that people who were upset that 5 was the best Final Fantasy game there I have placated you with 7 but 7 is not a good game either <laughs> I believe eight is the worst. Yeah, that uh, that aspect of love they shoved into there ruined it because that was not love. That is what Westerners call love. And that is why they never have any relationships or never marry. <laughs> and that is why the divorce rates only go up. <laughs> Anyways, so now I have three variables. And they will be three arguments here. And as you can see, print F cannot be empty, as opposed to print line, for example. So what I will create is, okay, let us say percent S. Percent S is for strings. Uh, let me show you the conversion character here. Is for strings. If you use a capital S instead, it will convert the string to uppercase. Uh, plays, oh, sorry, I need to keep it within the, uh, plays final fantasy, uh, seven, which he bought for what would be the price of a stupid game? Uh, 
well, since I have five here, I might as well use that. 0.2 decimal places, F. Okay, so here I will place Muhammad. Here, because it is a, an integer, I will place seven. And here, because it is a floating point, I will place five. And as you can see for the five, I want the five to be two decimal places only. There are no flags or uh, precisions or width set to this one or to this one. Now I need to provide the arguments. I have three placeholders. I need to use three, uh, uh, three uh, arguments. But I do not need to abide by the order here. If you will not resort to the argument index, you must abide by the order. So I will show you how to set the arguments without the argument index and with the argument index. So this must be name followed by uh, num2 followed by num1. So now the orders match the, the placeholders or the locations of the format specifiers. Name coincides with the first specifier. Num2 coincides with the second format specifier. And num1 coincides with the third format specifier. There we go. Perfect. Muhammad 7 and 5.0. 0, 0 for the two decimal places. What if I do not wish to adhere to the order? I wish to list them in the order I prefer. So I will list them in this order. Num1, name, and num2. Of course, we will have an error because they do not match. So how would I force this to match? This is where the argument index comes into play. What is the index of this variable? When you hear index, immediately think of arrays or the indices in arrays. Every index starts with zero. So the argument index in this scenario is zero. This index is zero. Uh, yeah, this is fine. What about the index of name? This is the second uh, argument, so the index is one. This is the third argument, so the index is two, like so. Whenever you hear index, remember to count from zero, just like arrays. So you place these argument indices into their respective format specifiers, followed by the dollar sign. This string here is index number one, so we will place one dollar sign. And this is the uh, this is index number two, so this will be two dollar sign. And lastly, this is index zero, so it will be zero dollar sign. And I believe I have an error here. Uh, oh, so that's one, two, and three. Okay, I apologize for that. Here the indices start with one, two, and three, because these are arguments, not arrays. So indices that start with zero are only for arrays and enums, but that is a different story. But because these are arguments, you can start with one, not zero. Now let us print this and see, well, we do not have any errors. So that means we have performed this correctly, but let us test it by executing. Muhammad plays Final Fantasy VII, which he bought for $5. And as you can see here, even though I used the string as a second argument, because I specified the argument index with the dollar sign, I could list this in any order I, I wish, and it will be printed 
correctly. We will continue this further with the upcoming lecture, inshallah, known as string interpolation. We will discuss what string interpolation is and how you can use it in Java. But before we cover string interpolation, we needed to cover format specifiers. I will be attaching these uh, in the description below this video, bi'ithnillah and God willing. Feel free to experiment with these. I urge you to do so, especially with percent %n. This is similar to the escape character backslash n. Well, it is not similar. It has the same functionality, but similar syntax. It is not the same syntax. It is similar syntax. And that is it with regards to this lecture. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all. Oh, before I forget, I wanted to do this before I ended, but I forgot to mention this. Let us see what happens with the width of a string. How does that affect a string? The precision is affected if you are using a number as a string. Then you can use a precision. But let us see what happens with the width of a name. Uh, we will set it to 10. Let us see what happens. Hmm. As you can see, it has been pushed slightly. But how many spaces? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this 10 is a part counts the spaces and the characters. So the number of spaces plus the number of characters in a name must equal the width, the width you will be using. This is, of course, if you would like to format your output in a particular manner, because you cannot format the output here once it is displayed. It is not as you would do in a Word document, unfortunately. You need to format it through coding. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Fil alameen, innaka hamidun majid.